even when I was like, no, you know, tell my parents um, what my new beliefs were. First of all, that wasn't met (laughs) very well. That was not celebrated. Also that I would not be, um, you know, being a lawyer, even though I took out all those student loans, right. And, and put all that work into that, that, um, you know, I had awakening into, um, what I felt was me and my, and my true self and living, um, authentically. And we don't really get valid for that at all. So one of the obstacles for me was actually believing in the work, you know, believing that this was my life path and, um, not caving into how much opposition I got from it, you know? Hey everyone, my name is Sarah and welcome to Her Ascension Story, the podcast that proves the world is transformed by every hero's personal adventure. Here we talk about the real and the raw things that we should all be talking about more. So if you want to be a part of the movement of getting real about the deeper, more meaningful things about life, be sure to subscribe and follow and get ready to get real. My hope is that this platform inspires you to explore and expand new empowering beliefs about yourself so you can make your own impassionate impact too. And those three pillars, inspiration, independence, and impact, aren't just the premise for this podcast, but for my work too. If you want to check out that more, be sure to go to HerAscensionStory.com or check me out on social media at HerAscensionStory. Welcome back, everyone. Today with us is Susan Hassan, who is a quantum practitioner specializing in quantum sphere healing. Using higher dimensional healing techniques, she works with clients to clear the energetic patterning behind physical and emotional trauma, connecting them with their higher selves and empowering them on their journey back home. She runs the blog CosmicArtress.com, where she uses her background in higher dimensional healing, emotional body, and energy body work to assist humanity in our spiritual evolution. Susan hosts retreats and workshops in Los Angeles focused on the quantum field, grounding, and self-healing. And I am so excited to have you here with us today. Thank you so much, Susan. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to chat with you today. So I've worked with you for, I think, a few years now, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and every single session that we do together is just so, it truly is life. Every time I, you know, dive into these deep um, traumas and experiences, and every single time um, we're done with a session, I just feel so much lighter and so much more hopeful, and it feels like the most effective thing that I have come across in terms of energy healing. And I don't know, I just admired you so much. (laughs) Oh, thank you. You know, thank you for saying that. Um, I care so much about these sessions and um, everything I put into each one. So when I hear that people can really feel the shifts that we're making, oh, it just, it makes me, thank you for that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so obviously I really love the work that you do, um, especially like the deep, healing and repatterning specifically but um we were talking before this and you said that you weren't always on this path and you were actually interested in law and actually went and got your degree so first what made you interested in law and then what made you transition into more healing work yeah, absolutely so you know um it's really funny because like my whole life i've about sort of like social justice and um us being free and and sovereign and kind of this idea of like, you know, what's the right thing to do? How can we help people? How can we support people? And so before my spiritual awakening, that looks very literal, right? Like third dimensional, (laughs) literal, uh, um, you know, I'll I'll go to law school. I can um, help with like, you know, human rights is something I always cared about. I was kind of like on on that kind of spectrum where like these voices need to be heard um, and how can we do it? And so kind of um, also being in Los Angeles, I was growing up here, um, always interested as well in like the music industry too, because um, that music's always been like a passion of mine. So I was like, oh, cool. I can go to law school and learn about copyright law, learn everything I need to do. Like, sir, way where um, there is this kind of, it's funny, an energy of sort of like protect, uh, protection rather, um, kind of like contract work. And so, uh, you know, I studied a lot of different things in law school and um, even had uh, a gig working at a record label at some point. And so it was funny because I was doing like literal music contracts and now I work with energetic contracts. (laughs) So the changes leap is kind of different, but you know, that was where I was at that point. 
I didn't really go into my deep spiritual awakening until I was about to graduate law school. So then a lot of things started to happen at that point. You know, I started opening up to the energetic realm and had more so the energetic realm interacting with me as well. So it was kind of like this crossroads because, you know, when I was younger, I was, was like growing up like eight years old. I wanted to be an astronaut, right? I was always obsessed with like space and things and crystals and rocks and you name it. And then just, you kind of forget, right? And you just get indoctrinated and you're in this path. And so I was more focused on what's like a third dimensional version of like a successful person. That's a lawyer, right? And that's what your parents always, you know, you hear, be a doctor. That's what you get validated from. So I was definitely getting that. Then I go into my deep spiritual crisis and I'm like, what's real? And um, a lot of the things I cared about just changed. And, you know, that happens with everyone when they're growing up. I was in law school in my early 20s and, you know, my my value system changed what I cared about. And I noticed that a lot of... um, unique gifts I had to myself, mainly being an empath, I actually considered being an empath a gift. Um, it was, it's hard, let's just say it's very hard being an empath in law school when you're in a very cutthroat, um, difficult environment. And that was, it was a challenging environment for me really. And it's like the spiritual awakening couldn't have come at a better time because I took that time to learn about myself and what I cared about. And it no longer was, you know, I think a lot of people go through this journey where, you pick this thing when you, uh, whatever you want to be your study when you're such an early age and, you know, you have society kind of influencing that. Then you get to know yourself more and see um, what, what's that going to look like? What does my true self look like? And um, luckily for me, I was able to, you know, connect with a shaman at <laughs> awakening process and um, learn about energy healing. And that's kind of when I that transition to Um, you know, being super interested in law and helping people, but now want to help people in a different way, which is, you know, empowering themselves through um, them finding what that true self is. And as you know, from the work, we work with the higher self to, to help guide a person back to that space. Oh, I love that. So um, you said the 3D was kind of like a literal um, plane, if we can call it that. Mm -hmm. So what would you consider and how would you describe higher dimensions and how people work with them every day? Yeah. So, you know, we are in a very like hierarchical um, model kind of, I would say, so third dimension more so on this, the like bottom of this pyramid. And um, I also believe we're multidimensional and we exist in several realms at the same time or several dimensions at the same time. And so, um, tapping into those higher dimensions is key to my work. And, you know, sometimes you can go to like a sacred space or spot, you know, on this planet name, you know, let's say places like Mount Shasta, for example, right. Or Sedona and the vortexes. And you get a taste of what those higher energies feel like. Um, we know that these energies are interacting with us or this planet. And it's kind of like, are you tuning in to that right frequency dial on that radio station. And so um, part of the work I do is accessing the higher dimensions and realms in order to provide this healing work. And so um, we have our third dimension, you know, this is our kind of like with this veil on us, kind of life as we know it, fourth dimension. So now we're going up more. And a lot of um, shamans that I work with, we consider this more like, you know, the astral realm. Um, This is where there are um, guides, ETs, you name it, um, goddesses, entities, all kinds of fun stuff. Then we go up to 5D here. And this really is the realm of the energy of just pure unconditional love, um, gratitude, appreciation. So 4D, there's still kind of more this like artificial construct going on. We call it the cosmic matrix. Um, 5D, you're kind of mm-hmm. beginning to like break out of that. And so my work actually takes place in the fifth dimension. Um, and how that is, is I reach that state through an altered brainwave state. I'm able to tap in and five and up, we consider the realms of the higher self. And so in my sessions, I'm only working as, with the higher self as a guide. So um, I make that kind of you know connection, communication um, by journeying into what we call in my work, the quantum sphere. So this is the fifth dimensional space. And so um, I like to call my work, you know, healing because literally we're going up there in order to perform the work and at the same time you could also think of it as a super bird eye bird's eye view right because 
Um, there is when you're working with a higher self, you know, you're working with the unstoried self. Um, and it's a little bit more like objective. Um, so I'm able to ask higher self where something's coming from, where like a pattern um, that's still ongoing, where's that being generated from? And it's that much easier to tap into a past life and retrieve that information. Cause I'm kind of in this like um, catalog of all of the client's life experiences, right? Um, also, when we're thinking quantum, we're outside of space and time. So kind of like the third dimensional rules of like this linear order don't really apply. And so we can tap into a past life or um, kind of point um, where some sort of like traumatic event in the client's life is still vibrating. Um, so these points actually vibrate, echo out of different dimensions. So I'm just accessing it from a higher point of view. And I think that's why clients feel much more lighter after a session, right? Kind of like more connected to the self because how they're integrating um, that shift that we're making um, on so many different levels. I kind of went in there with that one. I hope I answered your question. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and I love how you mentioned the past life thing, mm -hmm. but also something that's been really profound in my sessions with you is the ancestral healing mm -hmm. and like how much actually gets passed down and not just gets passed down, you know, um, I do want to ask you how things mm -hmm. get passed down, but also how things become triggered too. Um, mm -hmm. you know, like as I was going through a life transition, like this pattern that I never experienced became triggered and here it ended up being something that an ancestor, you know, experienced and it just became activated and, um, it felt so real to me. And without your work, I would have no knowledge of that and no like higher awareness on how to, not just like heal that, but actually cope and like grow through that. Um, but yeah, so talk a little bit about, I mean, we're definitely going to get back to your story, but this is so interesting. <laughs> so, good. so talk about like ancestral work and how much that really plays into somebody's journey. Yeah, it, it's really um, a huge aspect of it because we, I think um, something that comes through to people very, very clearly in the sessions is we are so much more than we think we are. And um a lot of times we, in a lot of ways, we can operate like this. I call it like this human, I want to emphasis on human, not AI, human supercomputer, <laughs> where all of our experiences are encoded in our DNA, but also our ancestors' experiences. And so um, that's what gets passed down. And there's a lot of great studies out there, um, information on things such as like ep epigenetics and our ability to turn on and off certain um, coding in our, uh, in our genes and um, things that we have coding for can relate to emotional issues, even how the body processes trauma, disease, it's all stored in a very delicate way. And so quantum sphere healing has really shown that um, what's going on through the ancestry line does get passed down to us. And some of us do have soul contracts that others don't where um, we have kind of taken off trauma to heal in this lifetime sometimes we can even get tricked into a contract and I'll, I'll see that like say in past life like you have to carry this with you forever and how does that look like well um curses is something that gets addressed in our sessions a lot of people are familiar with generational curses that can get passed down and sometimes in a session um that's what we're clearing and and it, if it comes up it's because the higher self is saying you know that this is relevant this is what's coming up ancestral belief systems can get you know past a prolonged period of stress or someone can get some sort of accident some sort of other trauma can kind of like awaken the muscle memory or cellular debris and so a lot of people feel those memories or stuff like that comes back to them and then it ends up showing up in a session where it's like hey you're carrying this or that and um to go by i don't want to just brush over the curses thing so how that can look like too um the way People used to speak in the past, right? Very casually, I curse you or this, or you might have mm -hmm. an ancestor that um, was involved in some sort of ritual, or it's kind of like a, a very traumatic death in a past life, whatever that is. Um, if that is still being carried with you, um, if it's appropriate for the session, that's, you know, that's what we release. Because we can also play out themes. Um, the way this can work is if you ever feel like you're just an autopilot, like you just do things automatically, Sometimes you're just playing something out there. Um, it can be as easy as grounding and getting really present to be like, 
why am I even doing this behavior? Am I consciously <laughs> in control of this? Or like, why is this heightened emotion here? Say you've done a lot of shadow work and you're working through something. Sometimes there's something extra that's there. You can't quite put your finger on it. And it might be an ancestral theme. And so in my sessions, I do access this. And themes that get passed down are something like um, – Scarcity consciousness is a big one. <laughs> and the ancestor who's lived through deep, deep scarcity, uh, w think wartime, um, any sort of heavy period of oppression, um, that can really have an effect on us. And, you know, one thing that brings up with me is um, think back to March 2020, this and our lives really changed. And there was no toilet paper. Imagine the kind of scarcity <laughs> that's re-imprinted on everyone, right? Mm -hmm. That is now in our genes. And so, um, you know, we can consciously do some work and connect to our abundance, of course. But that's the kind of effect that life, reality can imprint on us. So anything that I think is like deeply imprinted on the ancestors that we're still carrying, that's something important to release. And uh, I don't want anyone to get the thing that, oh, this is like necessarily a, a negative thing. No, there's things, like I said, um, there's contracts that we have made either, uh, you know, with th through the higher self, something that's been picked up where we're saying, okay, I'm going to be the one who transmutes this kind of, um, you know, pain or trauma in my ancestry line. Or we get to the point in our healing where we go, no, I'm not carrying this anymore. This isn't mine. And we, you know, thank the ancestors. And usually um, we can kind of fulfill those things um, for instance, just by being ourselves. So if you come from a family line, um, I, I can use myself where women um, generally didn't get to express themselves uh, more so where they're, they're seen and not heard. And I can track this through several like um, relatives through my maternal line. Me being outspoken, doing this kind of work that's very much outside of the norm, that's one way that I'm healing that ancestral pattern. So a lot of the things that we, you know, do for ourselves, um, heal within ourselves in a way, just by addressing that, you're also doing the ancestral healing. So it's really beautiful, actually. Oh, wow. I love that yeah. so much. Thank you for taking the time oh, to really explain all of that. So going into your, um, you know, if you can shed light on your soul contract, do you feel like that was something, you know, written in there that you were going to shift away from you know, like the literal um, translation of helping people to more of like the 5D um, translation of helping people with energy. Um, so like going away from the traditional living and going more towards the energetic and higher ways or higher ways as in like vibrationally. <laughs> you know, it's funny because like when I look back at my life, like none of what I'm doing now <laughs> can even make sense because I had no idea. I actually relate that to um, not so we could call it a, a contract, but um, being I identify as being a star seed. So what um, kind of makes me feel like I'm kind of um, embodying that is the fact that so star seeds they do come here to not only seed higher consciousness but also shake things up and introduce um, kind of like a, a new aspect or a higher dimensional aspect to something. And when I first heard that word, I, I had already been like certified in the work that I do. Then the context really changed for me and things made so much more sense. And um, I think to working within the higher realms is really the only thing that's come really natural to me. So I feel like me doing this work is actually like embodying more of my true self and what I uh, came here to do. Like not that I, I had to and I made this like contract to do it. Um, the kind of when something kind of like comes naturally to you or you love doing it, that's like your essence that you're bringing here. You know, you're embodying more of that higher self energy. So that's what I feel like I'm, I'm seeding here just by, by doing my work and uh, making it really normal <laughs> to talk about stuff like this, you know, <laughs> um, when I first began the work, you know, even like, um, being a practitioner in LA, people are more open to this work here, but, um, you know, at the beginning you say quantum, they're like, what? You know, they don't understand or it's just like, okay, weird crystal chick here, right? Something like that. They'll put you <laughs> in a category. Um, and so if anything, um, if when I think of like, okay, what was the soul contract or what was something here that um, 
was getting fulfilled on a level. I think me literally breaking out of the mold of what um, was expected of me, what even like what society expects of you and, and, you know, in this matrix, it's fit into something where you can feel oppressed or controlled and just stay quiet and stay asleep. And so many of us are choosing either like career paths or just interests that break that mold. And I think that's what really echoes um, more of those higher frequencies and wavelengths out there. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so powerful. <laughs> um, wow. So like you said, you weren't always kind of in this space. Mm-hmm. So growing up, you know, did you feel like you had obstacles to overcome, um, especially in terms of not fulfilling other people's expectations or, or, you know, what kind of obstacles did you go through to get where you are now? Yeah, you know, it was it was quite a trip. I mean, even um, I think one thing that would have helped me when I was a kid was knowing uh, what an empath is and being sensitive to energy. Because I like I, I often tell people I didn't have hippie parents. I came from a very um, conservative religious background and the only really measure of success was like financial success, right? Or if you have some sort of job, um, career that ha- gets all these accolades, like, are you, are you pretty much are you a doctor <laughs> or are you a lawyer, you know, um, kind of fitting in <laughs> just kind of like being normal and being that kind of like example of that. So there was a lot of like pressure to just, just be that and fulfill that. And I had, like I said, I'd, you know, gone into law school at such a young age. And so that had looked like, oh, wow, you're doing it, you know, because I actually like loved being in school and, and studying and getting A's like that was I, I did really enjoy that. At the same time, I could feel everything and everyone. And it was something that I was almost like blocking out. And I wish I had known how to cultivate that. So more of like, I would say my gifts would have been mm-hmm. activated earlier. But no, that wasn't my path. My path was to be a normal human <laughs> for this many years before, you know, I kind of, that's why I like identifying with the starseed um, notion so much. Cause like before I kind of went into like mission mode, you know? Um, and so being, like I said, so being an empath, right. A lot, I think a lot of people might relate to this um, being, so for me it was b- being um, clairsentient. So I can really, really feel people. And even to my discomfort, like to walk into a room and get a stomach ache cause you can energy in that room right or someone who feels really angry you could feel that in your body and not know what to do with it and so um I would I would feel that a lot as a kid and then kind of like put myself second and just try to make everybody comfortable thinking that it was me but I was actually feeling other people and so there was that energetic you know challenge going on and when you live like that for a long time you you hold that energy in your body and so I did kind of um create a lot of, I don't want to say create, but yeah, I had a lot of like health stuff I had to kind of heal and, um, and work through as well, especially like with how I held stress in the body. And then, you know, the obstacle was being go, you know, go on, make those big achievements, right? (laughs) Be, be really matrix validated. And, um, that was hard because I didn't fit, fit that mold at all. And so I didn't get that validation, which is fine. You know, we learn how to self-validate right through the healing journey. And so even when I was like, no, you know, tell my parents, um, what my new beliefs were, first of all, that wasn't met (laughs) very well. That was not celebrated. Also that I would not be, um, you know, being a lawyer, even though I took out all those student loans, right. And, and put all that work into that, that, um, you know, I had awakening into, um, what I felt was me and my, and my true self and living um, authentically. And we don't really get valid for that at all. So one of the obstacles for me was actually believing in the work, you know, believing that this was my life path and um, not caving into how much opposition I got from it, you know, and, you know, you might be familiar with this too. I think anyone attracted to this kind of work and field is that like people think you're crazy, right? <laughs> Especially family. Um, and to say, no, <laughs> this is my truth. This, I see reality clearly. You guys are actually the ones who don't. And to emanate that. And it's really funny because now, um, look how mainstream spirituality is. You know, look, look how there's crystal yeah. shops everywhere. That's normal. Tarot reading, normal. All these things that people kind of looked at you sideways for are in the mainstream. Now, the inner work is the only thing that really matters <laughs> out of all that, right? What you're putting inside. 
And so kind of people understanding that that's the point. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, a lot of stuff can get diluted, can get co-opted, but the thing is we are living now at a time where we can be out and open with the work we do. And keeping that within me was actually one of the biggest challenges. My parents had no idea I was running an energy healing business this like for years, like under their roof <laughs> at the time. Cause I had, uh, you know, kind of breaking that <laughs> path and having to support myself, um, through this work was difficult, you know, in the beginning. Um, so kind of going through those challenges and, okay, um, you're not going to go take the big money lawyer jobs and you're not going to do that. You're going to put your energy into something you believe in and grow. That was all that took a lot of faith. So, um, it, it, you know, it wasn't easy, but, um, the way I feel, and I got this early on, so that's how I knew it was in the right path. When I get the kind of feedback I get after a session, that to me is a feeling it's so undescribable. So that's how I always knew, you know, that I could stick through it because I hear things like what you said at the beginning of the call, we're like, wow, this is working for me, or I feel the shift or that, um, that's what, um, like I said, it makes my heart the happiest. Oh, wow. So what kind of mechanisms or tools or advice or anything like that did you use um, to kind of cope with your oh, sensitivity? Man. I, up? I don't think I did anything but just kind of push it to the back of my mind and numb it out. And then it would creep up and I'd be like, ah, where are we? <laughs> like I had so much existential angst growing up. It was ridiculous. Um, you know, emo over here. Um, it was hard, but you know, I would say the one thing that helped was I was like the friend that people would talk to and I would give advice to, um, or I would just, welcoming and empathic with open arms. And so I was always known as like the nice one. And I think, um, I would, I, th- there was a part of me that knew maybe it was completely subconscious that, um, if I'm not okay with something, I don't like the way something's going. Um, I can either, um, help make something easier for someone else. If that comes naturally to me or add something that is, um, good here, you know, um, I didn't have the words of, vibration or frequency to like describe things. But I think one way I was subconsciously coping was like, okay, how can I add to the positive, um, in this realm, you know, uh, whether it's, um, vibrationally, um, how can I show support or be heart centered? Really? I didn't know that I was this like empathic heart centered kid. I thought everyone was like that. <laughs> so that is kind of like this Darcy thing where you're like <laughs> so open, you know, um, I wish I had had for instance, the grounding techniques that I had only learned once I began my um, training in like healership work. So um, that's why I love when I work with younger clients too, or I tell parents um, who I'm working with, I say, hey, share this grounding exercise with your kids. You know, Um, there's a lot of energetically sensitive people out there. Um, These are ways for us to really like anchor in here and be able to, to, you know, (laughs) feel relatively balanced. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Mm -hmm. real quick just for everybody listening because a lot of um you know sensitive or empathic people definitely do listen to this so is there like a quick grounding method that you can share just um like something like really helpful that anybody can do anyway so a grounding exercise that I teach within my sessions is um and if you guys want to have um like more clear instructions on this I do have my grounding exercise on my blog cosmicarchers.com. It's going to be under my grounding article, which is an earlier post, but essentially you're, you're going to stand up and really just feel into your body and take some few breaths, you know, um, the, just like the physical vessel of the body. Cause the key to grounding too is, you know, if, if you're energetically sensitive or you feel like you're feeling all these kinds of like higher dimensions of frequencies that can throw us off balance, you want to anchor all of that into the physical realm here, right? Into Gaia and to receive that kind of like loving, unconditional support for her. So feel into my body. I stand up and I imagine a golden ball of energy above my head, right? Um, Closing my eyes, just opening the top of my head like a funnel and letting this golden light just pour down. And with each breath, send that down my body. And I just fill myself with this light. And then what I do is I form a single stream and I send that light straight into the heart of the earth. So you want to get visual here. Really envision yourself dropping that anchor or some people like to envision tree roots, you know, growing from the bottom. 
going into the heart of the planet. And so um, it takes some time when you're doing this exercise to really kind of like feel the effectiveness of it. Key is you want to trust that you're doing it right and that it's working. And over time, you might feel like some tingly sensations in the body or the bottoms of your feet getting heavy. So that's a good sign like, <clears throat> excuse me, yes, that I am that I'm anchored in here. A quick thing I like to do in the morning and at night or just any time I feel a little bit off. It's a great way. Think of it as just getting plugged in when you need to be plugged in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. Thank you so much for sharing that. So do you find that it's empowering now to have your sensitivity in the work that you do now? It's the one mechanism that allows me to under fully understand what the client's needs are, you know, and to tap in. So when they describe to me a feeling, I can feel it. Um, and I can kind of better work with where that's coming from, um, how bound it is. Um, it almost is like I can feel a texture to it. Um, and sometimes when I get on the phone with mm-hmm. someone right away, I can feel if they're closed off, right? If they're shy, like instant from their tone <laughs> in their voice, right? And how they say hello. And that allows me to help them relax into the session, you know, um, meet them exactly where they are, because that's the beauty of the work too. It doesn't matter where you are in your spiritual path. If you aren't even, I've worked with people who aren't spiritual at all. I'm like, how did they even find me first of all? <laughs> or like, if they're like closed off to the work, but you know, like <laughs> someone recommended them or they had a session where like, Hey, this person helped me out. So that's, what's cool about this work is if it's your first time doing energy work, uh, or your, and then most of my clients, you know, are other energy healers, right? Or teachers. And, um, we, we need to get, we need to do a clearing or, um, reconnect someone to something, do a little push here from the quantum sphere. So from this perspective, um, we jump in and do it. And so I think if I didn't have those sensitivities, I wouldn't even know how to best serve the client. Um, it's funny because everything I do is so feeling based, um, and quantum sphere healing is more of like deep emotional, um, shifting, feeling, and integration. At the same time, I'm working with the client's higher self who's showing me exactly, you know, where, where something's coming from or where we need to move something. So it all works together, um, really beautifully. Um, sometimes I feel like I wish I can turn off (laughs) the, the feeling center because when I know someone's suffering, I I can feel that. And it, you know, it just breaks your heart and you want to do everything that you can to help a person. And, I I guess the only time that can get tricky is like, okay, well, you have to do the best that you can for that person in that moment. Um, And, you know, make sure not as an empath, right? We all kind of feel this to to take on so much of the world, right? Or so much of the energy um, or really just like through having so much compassion for someone, um, everyone's struggle. There needs to be a little bit of a buffer there so you can hold that um, objectivity for them and just guide them through a session as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's amazing. And so how, I mean, we talk about how, um, you know, your sessions help other people and Mm -hmm. I definitely want to do go into that a little bit more in a bit, but how, has your work helped you and oh, it's been major. I mean, every time I work with someone, I feel like I'm getting a healing myself. I, I see where all my matches are. <laughs> I, it's almost like reminders. I see where I'm relating to someone. Um, I even see a point where I was that version of myself or that's something that's resonating with me and is a reminder that this is an area, you know, that I need to do more work on. Um, something like shadow work, which is so important, is a lot of these practices, sometimes this is hard for people who want to come into something with like a quick fix in this life, is that um, this work, it is, is a life's work, is a life's practice. And so um, if I'm doing so many sessions, say in a day or a week, and I haven't had time for myself, um, I'll get that notice. <laughs> I'll get that reminder because I'll see a match of someone bringing something that's so close to something that I need to work on too, um, that I'll, you know, I'll see it. So um, it, it, I feel like even these sessions keep me on track because um, I'm every day kind of like in this realm where it's like, reminder, inner work, inner work, inner work. So when I'm outside of session and I'm say just interacting with family, right. Um, and I get a trigger or something is going on, I go, okay. Um, Hey, this was a synchronicity. I just talked to someone about this. It's really funny the way that works. And so I, I jump in and 
you know, um, my own journey has been about like stepping in, um, doing the self work. Cause I even was attracted to learning how to do energy work because I was, um, uh, working on myself and doing like emotional and also some physical work. Cause I had some stuff come up for myself too. So, um, it, it's like, it never really slipped away from me. So I love that I'm constantly in this world, in this field. Um, it helps me go deeper within myself, but also, um, it empowers me. Uh, you know, I spend a couple hours with people and some people go, you must be so tired after that. I'm like, no, actually not. <laughs> I'm energized by this. I'm in the higher dimensions. You know what the energy feels like? I, <laughs> It feels like I'm having a shot of espresso when I'm up there. And so it's always reminding me <laughs> anytime I'm working with someone um, where I come from, which is the higher dimensions, right? Where we come from. And so um, it's, it, it's like it holds me accountable for, <laughs> for my own work as well. So I absolutely love it. Um, and I think it's also helped me heal a lot of different things. Like um, being younger, you know, um, I felt like I wasn't always listened to, right? And then I work with these amazing clients who, who are deeply listening to me. And I'm like, wow, I feel really seen right now. <laughs> that was something I needed as a kid. And now I get it through kind of the work that I do. And um, if I didn't get certain validation for, for certain things from different people in my life, um, when someone has told me, hey, you helped me, um, the way that feels, and it's, it's definitely not saying this is about me and yay, I got validated. No, but to know that, um, something you care about is being received by other people. That's healing for me as well. So, um, it's given me so much. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so powerful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, how it can be a two-way street. <laughs> and yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's a beautiful mirror too. You when you go into a session with someone and you're like, "Oh, I just broke through something like this." Like, let me, you know, share what helped me. Or um, definitely, you know, that reflection of this is what I need to work on mm -hmm. myself more. Like that brutal honesty that we have to have with ourselves. Yeah. So, are there any kind of like common themes that you find um, throughout your clients? like common themes of things that um, like they're healing or especially now as we're going through, you know, oh, yeah. the epidemic I mean, and everything. Number one, I would say is expression, um, feeling free enough to express yourself and truly be yourself. Um, you know, it's funny. I want to say mostly with female clients because the feminine energy has been just, you know, more oppressed <laughs> on an, a patriarchal timeline, but with so many male clients as well, um, that throat chakra, you know, activating that, keeping that open. Um, so many people have lifetimes where they are silenced or they're working through, you know, either being silenced in childhood. And so that's been such a major theme to the point where I, I wrote a recent article about it, um, activating the throat chakra by using your voice, because that is, is key for people right now. And it's actually really related to what's going on because, uh, you know, as soon as, uh, the quarantine sort of happened in March, a lot of people were questioning the reasons behind it and speaking out against all the multiple agendas that have been in place since this all happened is a big part of our evolution, right? Because from the perspective of my work, it's all about personal sovereignty and accessing that and integrating that. So this is, I think the most important time in our history to use your voice and speak out. Um, especially when darker agendas are playing out. And you see that. I think everyone is seeing, especially in our community, the kind of censorship that's been going on. And um, in a way, it's like exciting to me because it's like, now you know reality is shifting because <laughs> shit's getting real, right? So <laughs> that thing that has been coming up for years in sessions of expressing yourself, using your voice, reclaiming your power, standing up against like oppression in your own life, whether it was, you know, growing up in a certain household or stay on in, in some sort of like political way um, that has been like ultra magnified <laughs> this past year. So that's been really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It, it makes it feel more hopeful <laughs> and optimistic to be going through this time um, rather than just looking around and trying to focus on the chaos and everything like that. And just having that higher perspective oh, is yeah. just so helpful. 
Oh, man. So what kind of goals or dreams have come to fruition because of your transformation process into oh, wow. how you I are mean, now? Just honestly, for me, feeling just like feeling free. Um, I know as a kid, I never felt like I can always be myself, right? Or always have to like hold something in, right? Or just be polite or girls aren't supposed to act this way or, or, or be powerful or, or be loud. Um, my upbringing was more like the boys are more important than you. So the fact that I even have, that I work equally with male and female clients who come to me to guide them through something, right? Or who trust me enough with their energy to allow me to do this sensitive, beautiful work with them. That's, that's a dream come true, you know, um, to also be able to like have my own practice was always something I wanted, you know, when I was even in law school, um, I wanted something to be mine. Like at some point I wanted to have my own like practice, right. Or at one point I even inspired, Oh, I can have a record label one day or, or whatever. I wanted to, to be my boss. And so I like that. <laughs> and it's funny by being my own boss sovereignty with where I put <laughs> my own energy, that's only reflected externally in the fact that I get to run my, my quantum sphere healing practice, um, and dictate, um, w- you know, who I work with, when I work with somebody, hours, right? Um, it was really hard for me fitting in and being normal and going to a nine to five. So for me, the fact that I can do healing work <laughs> and like really help people, but also answer to myself um, has always been, and I'm a double Sag, so there's all kinds of stuff going on there. <laughs> and so um, I like being independent. <laughs> um, I like, um, you know, just like being upfront. And for me too, um, being seen has been important. And the fact that I even get to do this kind of podcast interview with you, that's, that's fulfilling dreams for me too. Like someone wants to hear what I have to say, (laughs) you know, healing that is if I could tell my younger self that, (laughs) oh, she'd be thrilled. And I actually can tell her that because inner child work. So (laughs) there we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah the inner child work, work. Uh, oh yeah a whole episode just on that <laughs> okay so you said like growing up um you know you kind of had these expectations and this kind of pressure um from your family but now what does your support system look like and how do I mean, they impact you they your still work? think what I do is weird <laughs> for sure um not my, my kind of like <laughs> spiritual um, awakening and I guess influence hasn't really rippled to everyone. But you know what? Um, I make a little bit more sense because my parents see that I have clients, you know, I, that I'm working all the time or they see my social media. Well, hopefully they don't, but <laughs> no, they see that um, I can talk about things <laughs> that resonate with people. And now because things have gotten so mainstream, um, having a bunch of crystals isn't as weird to them, right? Um, Alternative holistic methods now. (laughs) They've seen that show up. So um, my family goes, oh, my sister does this. Or, you know, oh, um, I have a daughter who's an energy healer. Okay, that's a thing. And so um, that I never even needed that, right, or expected that to happen. But um, it's funny when you start making sense to people that you've already kind of just, you know, pulled away any expectation energy from. So that's just been like funny for me to see. Um, Cause part of it was like, Hey, you know, your family doesn't necessarily understand what you're doing. Are you still going to do that? Or are you going to go be a people pleaser? Right. Are you going to shut down an important part of yourself so that you're accepted? And so when I decided, no, I accept myself um, just through me doing that, it reflected in, in the external with, Oh, cool. You're, you're working with this. Um, kind of modality or this kind of healing work. Oh, wow. You, you're, you're doing a podcast. That's really cool. So, you know, very, very unexpected. And um, it's, it, it does feel good, you know, but um, like I said, I, I did that work to really remove that expectation energy. And so there wasn't really any um, attachment there. So I feel like I can still just kind of focus on the work, but yeah, um, it feels good to be more understood. <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be yeah. even more interesting as time goes on too mm-hmm. and we move into the future and these things yeah. become just even more and more popular definitely so speaking about the future um, 
what kind of future plans do you have for your work? Mm-hmm. I know like you do retreats. Do you have anything coming up or Absolutely. what's happening? Now? <laughs> um, I've been really focused on moving into more of that teacher role. Uh, I'm really excited because I'm actually working on my first book. And um, that's something that's been in the works for a while because I'll, you know, I'll have clients after session be like, oh, where can I read more about this or, or learn more about this? So I'm finally like um, getting that going. And I've, I actually spend a lot of my time writing um, articles about like, so if you guys go on my blog, you'll see, okay, she's got an inner child article. She's got something about the throat chakra. She's got the grounding articles. So um, what's next is just getting everything, you know, in, into a book and, um, that's where my focus currently is, but my, my favorite thing is these sessions. <laughs> so that's what, so for me, it's, um, <laughs> you know, continuing to, to have one-on-one time with people is really important. Um, I am also excited about the retreat. Like you mentioned, that's been more of the newer thing. We did one last year. So it's a women's alchemy retreat that I host. Um, and this year's will be in 2021. Obviously, uh, we tried to pull it in 2020, it just wasn't happening um, in Joshua Tree, California. And the focus is teaching, um, you know, alchemy is something that is more of a, let's just say like a, a more male dominated field. You know, there are female alchemy teachers out there. So it is important for us to, to know about these concepts. Um, you know, not to bring in any kind of sense of separation here, but very rarely do we have um, these kinds of settings where women are just studying the more ancient esoteric. And so that's part of it, which is really cool. Um, but I also teach, so my partner teaches, um, more of the alchemy based things and I teach more of the quantum workshops. And so I teach grounding, um, altered brainwave states. So think gamma, theta, um, basic energetic tools. So really these are kind of, um, workshops so that, um, you emerge from the tree retreat, excuse me, with a better understanding of self, but also like practical tools for your own self healing. And, um, shadow work is a big part of it. We have a shadow work workshop and you know, you're somewhere really beautiful. So the last time it was, Oh, hi, these are, we definitely pick places that have more of a vortex type of energy. Joshua tree is a big one. Um, so that's what we have. And it's actually going to be in January, 2021. And um, we still have some spots available. So if anyone's interested, um, our website is alchemyretreats.org. Um, and you can go ahead and get registered. And so um, that's one of the things I'm really, really excited about. And then I know the retreats, these are like bigger four-day immersions. Um, workshops are also um, on the horizon. And I will be doing a, a Zoom seminar. Um, so that that's something new. So, you know, normally I'm used to just working one-on-one with people. So more of these like group events is what's next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. (laughs) I will definitely be buying your book just because this is, this stuff is so interesting, but yeah, you're right. Like people are Mm -hmm. always wondering more about it. And so I'll have to buy like five copies and Uh, just keep handing them out. (laughs) It's not just about how much I love doing the work, but right now I'm so excited that people want to learn more. So now the passion is like sharing this work. Right. And so that means, Hey, I'm sitting down and just, and just writing more. And, um, hopefully, you know, if by disseminating this kind of like information, it's going to inspire people, um, you know, on their own journeys, because like I said, I'm, I'm so lucky enough to work with so many different people. Um, and that's why I feel like this kind of like that I've been able to have with people say whether it's like individually or in like a bigger context like a workshop or retreat um that's what I would consider like a real shift happening here um so many of us are finding each other right who are who are on this path or are doing this inner work and just kind of each other magnifying it um it's just I'm seeing that all around us right now and it's just so beautiful truly Okay, so where can people, I know we've mentioned links and everything like that, but so let's just sum it all up. Great, so So, um, my website is quantumspherehealer.com. You can visit that website if you're interested in booking a session, reading more about what my process is, you know, checking out the testimonials. If you want more of just like the content to see what my writing looks like, my blog is cosmicartress.com. But you could also find that blog through my website. Um, for more real-time things that I'm actually talking about, 
my Instagram account is at quantum sphere healer. Um, I, you know, I'm on there, I'm active. So, um, I like to share things that resonate with me, but also promote things more in real time, like available session dates or any sort of like retreat and workshops. Um, I do, I'm more interactive, um, on Instagram. So if you want more real time updates, but, um, if you guys are interested in my actual healing modality, um, and really my life's work, uh, definitely just checking out quantum healer.com. We'll give you, you know, a nice description of what I do, but it's honestly so hard to actually describe <laughs> what each session entails, as you know, because it's different for everyone. And, um, we get, you know, so much information, um, in session, but I, I love connecting with you guys. So if you have questions about the work, you can also just email me through the website. Mm -hmm. oh, amazing. And I definitely, once again, highly recommend. Um, and like you said, you, it can be the very first, you know, mm -hmm. dip in the water of energy healing. Um, and it's just going to be so profound and so impactful for <laughs> everybody's you. journey, I think. <laughs> Okay, so I only have one last question, and it's my favorite question to ask. Um, I think it's a great one to be asked, but for everyone listening to also ask themselves. So the question is, who is the superhero inside of you that has all the power? Oh, that's a great need? question. <laughs> so, like, literal <laughs> superhero? <laughs> However you well, interpret, I get all kinds honestly, of different answers. I mean... I don't know if this might be obvious, but my higher self, I feel like this is my lifetime of trying to embody as much of my higher self as possible and actually merging with higher self and, um, you know, hopefully leaving the third dimension and ascending into higher ones. But, um, <laughs> the, why is my higher self, you know, my superhero? It's, it's really funny because I actually growing up loved superheroes, um, Wonder Woman, Xena Warrior Princess, Super Superman, Batman, you name it, right? Like, I love all that stuff. And the closest thing <clears throat> in terms of trust and powerful and knowing yourself and knowing you're different, but can also help empower others. Look at my throat going off. <laughs> <clears throat> I've seen that in higher self. And so <laughs> that voice that's been guiding you through this whole journey, you don't know why, you don't know why things are working out or seem to have the illusion of not working out, but you're getting redirected to your true work or your life path. That's because you're, you're listening to your higher self, your higher self's guiding you, right? Even if you don't know you're consciously listening, you're always being guided. And so to me, that's the closest thing to a superhero. Um, we all want to feel that, right? Because we are our own superheroes in a lot of ways. So I want to say my, you know, you want to say oh, myself, right? And I mean, this is no ego, but it's like, no, you want to be that person that you came here to be. You want, you want to, um, to integrate that, right, and fully embody it. And so how I feel like I can even get there is through the self-work and the inner work that I do um, with my own higher self. So, yeah, I guess that's my answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Of course. Oh, thank you so much, Susan, for coming on. I have so much gratitude and it's been an honor to hear and share your oh, story. Thank you so I much for you so much. allowing me to share my voice today with you um, and having me and giving my work, um, you know, this platform. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. I hope that this episode has some way inspired you to take control, given you the tools to feel secure and on fire in your own independence, and help to unlock within you the impact that you're here to make. You're not born with a purpose. You're born as your purpose. It's already inside of you, and it's your responsibility in this life to live that in the truest way possible. If you've gotten any sort of value out of this episode, please share it so that we can together expand our inspiration and our impact in this world.